I would be completely remiss if I did not take you guys into the, the human body, or any organism for that matter, and talk to you about the way they actually do meiosis. See, mitosis, it's fairly easy to visualize. You can visualize your, 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 the, the lower layers of your skin cells replicating to eventually form the upper layer of your skin. You can picture organ repair. You, know, you can even picture cancer. But, but how does one picture meiosis and, and forming the products of meiosis? And, and let's talk about spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis, obviously, has to do with the genesis or the generation of sperm. It happens in that organism which we have just decided to call the male. In fact, the definition of a male is the creature with the active gamete, generally speaking. So, so let's take a look, first of all, at just an overview of, of meiosis, and then we'll take a look at how this pertains to the male organ, particularly a human male organ. Remember meiosis, what do we have? We, we're gonna start out with a cell, and that cell is gonna have the diploid number of chromosomes, and that cell is going to go through its doubling, just like it does in mitosis, and then in the doubling of the chromosomes, we're gonna split our homologs, and in splitting our homologs, we've, we've performed our first division. So we've learned, we, we, we're, we're out of meiosis one, okay? Now, we've, we've separated our homologs, that's the good news, the bad news, if bad is what you want to call it, is that the homologous chromosomes are still doubled. So we have to do one more division, and so literally, this is a sequential process. Well, sequential's nice, but how do you do sequential in an organ? You know? And, and so, therefore, we, must, we, we have to consider the fact that there must be layers. And this, this must be one layer, this must be the next layer, and either working inward or outward, this must be the next one, and this must be the next one. Well, that's exactly the way the male testes works. Let's take a look at a diagram of the testes, okay? Um, and, and this, is, you're not seeing cells here, but you're seeing some important ultrastructure to this thing. And what we're seeing is we're seeing what are called seminiferous tubules. And it is within the seminiferous tubules that I want to concentrate right now. Seminiferous tubules. These sperm-forming tubules, if you will, are where meiosis is going to occur. So we're going to zoom in microscopically and take a look at one of these seminiferous tubules. And so now we're looking inside one of the tubules, and you see what I referred to a second ago, layers of cells, okay? And there seems to be some space in between these cells, and there seem to be uh, cells of different morphologies, of different shapes. And, and eventually, it looks like you got right in the center of this tubule, in that portion called the lumen, remember the inside of a tubule is called the lumen of the tubule. In the lumen, it looks like you have these, these things which resemble sperm. Well, let's zoom still closer and take a look at the real inside, the microscopic view of a seminiferous tubule. And what's, what's kind of cool here is we can actually now see the layering that occurs. All righty. Let's take a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up alongside of this and we'll take a look, and I'll overlap them just a wee bit, and, and we can see what's going on here. Okay, literally, these are lining up cell for cell. Now, here's the point. As we move through, we are eventually going to produce sperm. And so looking at the bottom, again, where I was down in the lumen of that tube, we're going to see that the eventual product are these things called sperm or spermatozoa. Now, we, we have some names for all of these things, and, and, and as it works through, you can see that it, it's, it's, a, it's a primary, secondary, final product story. As we get, and I'm going to work backwards, just to give you an idea. Spermatozoa, zoa meaning animal-like, okay, are, are the final product, and we shorten that to sperm. The, the product just before the sperm or the spermatozoa are this, is, this, is this literally haploid cell, and that haploid cell is called the spermatid. 
And the spermatid corresponds right across here. And then we're going to get to what is called the secondary. Uh, okay, we have secondary and we have the primary. Now the primary spermatocyte and the secondary spermatocyte. And I'm going to abbreviate that, lest I run out of room. Primary spermatocyte and secondary spermatocyte. And once again, we can see what we have. We have the original cell, okay? And then from the original cell, we go to the primary spermatocyte, which will be located in this layer right across from it. And then we move to the secondary spermatocyte, which will be just above the spermatids. And then we move to the spermatids and the spermatozoa. So you're looking at this cell and you're saying, well, well what's that? Well, this is not one of the spermatocytes. This is actually called a Sertoli cell. And a Sertoli cell is a nutrient cell to provide nutrients for these developing cells. Well, all of that being said, what happens next? And, and, and what are some of the limitations? And, and, and what exactly does a sperm look like? Well, you know, the most important thing you have to realize about sperm is that they are built for their function. And what's their function? Their function is to penetrate an egg. So if we take a look at just a diagram of a sperm, and you know, in the development unit of this course, we really go into a little more detail on this. But the bottom line is this, a sperm has a long flagellum, and that flagellum is absolutely surrounded by mitochondria. And you guys probably know the function of mitochondria is to burn energy, All right? At the tip of the sperm is a structure called the acrosome. This is an enzyme acrosome, and that is where the enzymes are carried to penetrate the egg. And here, of course, is going to be the one end nucleus, the haploid nucleus that, that is going to target that once the acrosome allows penetration of the egg membrane, the nucleus will get in there. Just a couple of other things uh, in terms of structure and function. Interestingly enough, sperm production has to occur several degrees below body temperature. But you didn't know that. And therefore, especially in humans, we find that the testes actually are encased in a sac that hangs down below the body called the scrotum. And in, in essence, it's air conditioning. In essence, it's the way to expose the testes to air circulation so that they can be several degrees below the body temperature. And, and so, so that's kind of, an, you know, a lot of my students always say to me, you know, one of the things, and any guy will tell you this, you know, why are such sensitive organs? I mean, think, think, those of you who are girls know this story. What does your mother do if that, when you're little, she says, if that boy bothers you, you just kick him hard and, and mom tells you where to kick him. And, and whether that's nice or not, the bottom line is, what a strange evolutionary device to have such a sensitive organ descended below the body. But structure follows function, doesn't it? And if the testes are going to be made several degrees below body temperature, the, the testes has to be descended below the body for that so-called air conditioning. But I have one more thing I have to ask you. Structure follows function, right? You have all these cells turning into sperm. The sperm are constantly leaving the male's body from the age of puberty practically till death. Why doesn't a guy run out of testes? Why doesn't the testes just kind of disappear after 20 years? You never thought of that, did you? Now you're saying, please tell me the answer. Are you gonna be scared if I say, well, they do? No, they don't, and there's a reason for that. And I have one more thing to show you. See this cell right up here, this germ cell? The one that's gonna give rise to the spermatozoa and the spermatids? Well, guess what? This cell can also do mitosis. And if it can do mitosis, it can replenish tissue in the testes, and therefore some of the cells will go into meiosis, some will replenish the testes. So again, structure follows function. Meiosis happens in the testes. The testes are organs built to do meiosis.